Hey everybody, it's Travis. Eight years ago, I built this farmhouse style table with breadboard ends and center, and I made a lot of mistakes. And as you can see, I paid for my mistakes. There's a huge crack going down the middle of it. So what I'm gonna do is take this top off, cut it apart, and fix it the right way. The first thing we need to do is get this top off and get it out to my workshop. I would like to note that I installed this the first time eight years ago with pocket hole screws, and I may or may not have used glue. So it might be fun getting this thing off. So that completely sucked, which brings me to my first mistake. You should never install a tabletop with screws and glue. Using screws and wood glue does not allow the tabletop to shrink and grow with changes in temperature, which can lead to cracks. No surprise, a piece of the original white oak cracked when I was removing the tabletop from the frame. So I went and glued and clamped this up to see if I can save it. While that's drying, let's go ahead and cut apart the rest of the tabletop. As you can see, these boards are actually quite flat from the first time they were milled a long time ago. However, I'm going to still run them through the planer just to clean up both sides. And then later on, I'll take them down to the final thickness. All my boards have been cleaned up in the planer, including the board that was broken when I was removing the tabletop. I also got two new pieces to replace the initial piece that was cracked and plane those down as well. Now I'm going to run all the boards through the planer again to take them down to the final thickness. All my boards are planed down to the same thickness and looking good. Now let's use my new jointer jig to put a straight edge on all these boards. I'm getting ready for the final step of these boards and that's to cut them to their final width. But as you can see, I have a center breadboard, which kind of complicates things a little bit because none of these boards are really the same width and they never were to begin with. So in order for it to look continuous, from this side to that side, I want the boards on this side to be about the same width as the boards on that side. So once I get these all laid out exactly the way I want them, I'll number them to make sure that they stay that way when I glue them up. The next step is to mill my final edge on my boards. However, I need to also pay attention to the fact that I have matched pairs. So those matched pairs need to be the same width. I want to be able to see the individual boards. So as you can see here, I put a round over on the edge of these boards and there's no round over on these boards. I'm gonna now do that on all the boards. I also think it might help cover up any mistakes that I make later or any gaps that open up over time. All right, so I'm liking the way everything looks. So let's get started with our first glue up. Thank you. 
After a few hours, it was time to remove the clamps. Now that the panels were glued up, I cut them to be even and square. I soften the panel edges I just cut with a small roundover bit. The boards are going to shrink and grow with changes in temperature and humidity. So before I go ahead and cut the breadboards their final length, I'm going to bring everything inside and let it climatize overnight. Okay, the time has come to cut the breadboard ends to the proper length. I'm going to cut them just a little bit long because I sort of prefer that look. Plus, as they expand and contract with heat and humidity, they'll still stay just a little bit proud. Now that the breadboards were cut to length, I wanted to soften that edge up a little bit too. Now we're going to attach the breadboard ends. I'm going to use dowels for this, which I haven't done before, so it should be interesting. My plan is to put one dowel in the middle of each board, and I'm going to glue the three middle ones on both sides, and then the outer two on both sides are going to have slots in the breadboards to allow it to float. I'm using a doweling jig for this. I put a link to this and all the other products I'm using in this video in my description. To make the outer slots, I just drilled two dowel holes and then chiseled out the section in the middle. For this side, you can just do the dowel holes. No need for slots. I had two dowels that were slightly out of alignment, so it required some fine tuning. Okay, it's on. So as you can see, I had to make a little bit of adjustment, but overall it actually went a lot better than I thought it would. Um, so the next step here is to pull this off and glue this up. But I'm, like I said before, I'm only gonna glue it right here in the middle on these three dowels. Then after that, I'm just gonna do the same thing on the other two breadboards. I glued in all the dowels to the center section and just the three middle dowels on the breadboard side.
With all the breadboards attached, all that was left was to attach the two halves. I didn't have clamps long enough, so I made some simple extensions. So the top is pretty much finished. All it needs now is sanding in the actual finishing. I'm gonna use Odie's oil to finish it. However, as you can see here, I have a little bit of an issue that I need to resolve. So cutting the table down and trying to reclaim the wood and save it also made the tabletop a little bit smaller. So what I need to do to correct that and get the right amount of overhang is actually cut the frame down. So next, I'm gonna cut the frame down before I even finish the tabletop. I took the measurements and figured out they need to remove one inch from the length and one inch from the width. So I made this little one inch block to make a reference line for my cut. Let's take a quick pause so I can apologize for all the sweat. It's probably like 110 degrees in here. Now that the width is cut down to size, I repeated these steps to cut down the length. I'm not going to lie to you, that part sucked, but now the frame is exactly three inches smaller than the top in both directions, so I'm going to have an inch and a half overhang. Now comes the next step, which is the final step before we actually sand the top and finish it. And that's to install these little guys. These little brackets will allow the tabletop to float in both directions, unlike the glue and screws that I used the first time. That overhang is significantly better. Now the time has finally come to sand. I'm going to start with 40 grit and work my way up to 120. We are finally ready to finish. For finish, I wanted kind of a matte dark finish on this white oak. So I went with OD Super Duper with espresso pigment mixed in this jar.
To apply the Odie's oil, you use the supplied applicator, which is basically just a scotch bright pad, and work it into the surface. Then wipe off any excess with a clean rag or paper towel. Thank you for watching my entire video. I couldn't be more happy with the way it turned out. Don't forget to check out some of these other videos. Like, comment, and subscribe.